Nagaland. The very name of Nagaland wakes up in one's mind the picture of another world, a world of strange experiences, of strange sights, sounds, and smells. Nestled in the country's exalted northeastern region, Nagaland, the land of sunny cliffs and lofty mountains, emerges almost like a fantasy in time's dream. It retains much of its primitive charm in the mysterious looking mountains, in the sportive streams that climb down the rocky heights and gracefully sweep past deep ravines, in the almost impenetrable immense green, in the gentle breeze that carries with it the sweet fragrance and the brilliant colors of wild flowers. The sonorous melodies of a wide variety of winged minstrels wakes up the sleepy mountains. The black tragopan, a rare denizen of the salvant world, enhances the mystery of Nagaland. His Majesty steps in with graceful gut to see if everything is okay in his colorful kingdom. The elephant have the shiesta in the foothills. The mitun, which symbolizes prosperity to the Naga folk mind, moves far into the legends and popular folk culture. The era of mystery, so characteristic of the young hilly state, also surrounds the history of its people. The human landscape here is extremely colorful. The Nagas, numbering around 8 lakhs, belong to 14 different tribes and sub-tribes. Kohima, the capital district, is the home of the sturdy and colorful Angamis. They share the mountain slopes also with the Zilens, the Kukis and the Rengmas. Mokokchun means invincible. The music loving owls dominate the human landscape here and fill the air with their beautiful melodies. Bordering Burma is the home of the Changs, the Sangtams, the Poms, the Kemugans, and the Yemchungas, some of whom were the fabled headhunters of the past. Woka, commanding majestic views of the Doyang River, is a beautiful district, and the equally beautiful lotas capture its charm in the vigorous dances and music. Packed 
is another beautiful district known for a wide variety of flowers and the bled trachopan. The dominant strength to the human's landscape here is lent by the Chakasangs. The central district of Zuneboto is the home of the Semas who have behind them a long history of brilliant social cultural traditions. The Mon district, where one comes across the wholesome glimpses of Nagaland's ancient charm, is the home of the brief and sturdy cognacs. There was a time when these tribes preferred to have a sequestered life in their own small worlds. They live in fortified villages, in complete isolation from one another. Their mutual contacts, if any, were confined to internecine conflicts and had hunting incursions into one another's domain with primitive arms. The sleepy terrain walked up from its anonymity of the ages, when the outside world stepped in. Towards the latter half of the 19th century, in the form of British administrators and American missionaries. This is the state's oldest church, from where the missionaries carried the gospel far and wide. When the Second Great War broke out, with its full fury, Nagaland found itself thrown to the center stage of the world theater. This H. All Cherry Tree in the heart of Kohima town had witnessed and marked the limit of Japanese advance into India. It overlooks neat rows of 1200 touching epitaphs on bronze in a famous war cemetery that fills one's heart with nostalgic feelings. came the beautiful dawn of independence unfolding itself in its full splendor. But some insurgents tried to carry the meaning of independence too far and to reverse the march of times. The search for peace continued through spells of cloud and sunshine till the people's ancient wisdom helped them rediscover the correct path. A new rhythm warmed up the cold winter of 1963 when Nagaland became a state. The young state added a new dimension itself to India's story of assimilative culture and her quest for peace and progress. of confusion had not been able to rob the hills of their ancient charm or the people of their inherent creative passions. The very appearance of the Nagas reflect their ravenous passion for beauty and rhythmic blending of themselves with their beautiful landscape. It is this passion that leaves unmistakable imprint on whatever they came across and turns even ordinary things into objects of art.
spinning and weaving have been a part of the Naga's mythology, coming down from mothers to daughters since time immemorial. The wide-ranging weaving products of Nagaland are mostly striped with brilliant colors to suit the vigorous landscape of the hills. The fascinating and rich range of cane, bamboo and woodcraft products also unfold a vivid history of growth of beautiful traditions. Traditions that help human genus to flower so luxuriantly even in distant days. Life in the mountains is, however, not all colors. Agriculture has been the Naga's main occupation. But the primitive and wasteful June pattern of farming used to dominate the scene till recent times, denuding the mountain slopes without fetching the full return for their sweat and toil. The times, however, have brought in a rapid transformation. The June pattern is gradually giving way to better farming modes, like terrace farming on the slopes. The modern skills have started capturing the imagination even of the traditional farmer in the interior villages. This has naturally fetched better dividends to him. The mountain slopes, the nuded June fields of the past, are now dotted with luxuriant orchards of oranges, pineapples and other horticultural crops. The coffee plantations also speak eloquently of the notable strides made in the spheres of agrarian development. Recent times in Nagaland have really been the exciting story of an ancient society undergoing a silent transformation and gradually coming into direct contact with modernity. The young state is stepping into the industrial age with the help of raw materials provided by the fields and the forests. Nagaland sugar mills at Dimapur, an eloquent indication of the wholesome changes that have been brought about in the hilly state.
With a crushing capacity of a thousand tons of cane per day, the mill has naturally enthused the Naga farmer to go for cultivation of sugar cane in a bigger way. Nagaland is known for its immense green that holds out brilliant possibilities for faster industrialization on the basis of raw materials from the forest. The luxuriant bamboo groves have already added a new rhythm to the indulating landscape of the Mokokchun district. The Tuli Pub and Paper Factory, another important milestone in Nagaland's journey into the age of industrial progress. And modernity does not confine itself to the industrial projects alone. It has in fact pervaded all other spheres of Nagaland's life. Modernity has found its way even to the remotest hamlets of the state. Along the ever-widening network of the reptilian roads and magnificent bridges, The advent of the modern times is also evident in the generation of electric city. The magic of electric city is gradually reaching out to the nooks and corners of the state. Along the high tension lines that draw on the backdrop of the blue sky the contours of a brighter future. One gets a fair idea of Nagaland's growing into modern times at Dimapur. 
Dimapur, where shambles of an ancient civilization take one down to the corridors of history. To the golden age of the great Kachari kings of Assam. This gateway to the past is also the gateway of Nagaland to the outside world. Nagaland's transformation is also evident on the changing face of Kohima, the capital town. Kehira, as the local Angamis call it, is growing into the modern times as a nerve center of the enormous changes presently taking place all around. Education is obviously a sphere of high priority and Nagaland with a literacy rate of nearly 42% is now entering the age of specializations. The administration in the field of education and literacy has initiated imaginative steps to stimulate the quest for knowledge in the young hearts. The need for physical development and proper nutrition has not been ignored either. How all in the radio Kohima? The modern mass communication media have come into the hilly state in a big way. What are on the anvil, like the projected Doordashan Kendras, obviously have even greater significance. The changing skyline eloquently speaks of the gradual growth of Kohima, once the most populous village of Asia, into a modern city. Imposing modern structures like the massive secretariat complex under construction are bringing in the metropolitan air.
Nagaland is opening itself up to the tourists. This magnificent three-star resort for them fully reflects the world of hospitality that has always been a part of the Naga tradition. Nagaland is moving ahead, but it has been the story of an ancient society stepping into the modern times without losing its contact with the roots. They have not discarded the social traditions that had added so much to their lives even in the distant past. Rather, they carry the beautiful traditions into the modern times and gracefully blend them into the emerging new personality. The shape of the Mithun's horn still reminds them of the youth dormitories that used to infuse Spartan discipline and other values into the youthful hearts. The village heads in their typical red blankets, who reminds them of the village councils, still inspires confidence in the Naga's heart. The Nagas have been a fun-loving people, and even the difficult times have not roped them of the sparkles of their lives. <laughs> All the villagers, young and old, men and women, find the time to get lost in the sessions of sports and games, modern or traditional. The Nagas have outgrown their ancient animistic fates that made them see even natural calamities as expressions of God's irritation. They have mostly come into the fold of an organized universal fate. But they have not fully discarded the complex ancient beliefs as is evident from the silent grave so close to a residential house. The mystery of life after death is still unfurled to a Naga mind by the age-old dictum. If we are good, we will fly above and live in the stars. If bad, we will pass through several existences and become bees. The Nagas have not also discarded the wide variety of jinas or festivals that used to make life so colorful and interesting even in the primitive days. Their cycle of festivals normally coincides with the cycle of farming operations. And the festivities are usually marked by spontaneous flowering of the beautiful environs into songs and dances. Music comes to them as naturally as love. deep in human consciousness. The folk songs constitute a complete revelation of life's all-embracing rhythm. Life in its entirety, along with its sunshine and clouds, casts its shadow on the tender songs.
The dances, which had begun as rites to enhance fertility of the fields or to ward off diseases, are unselfconscious as art. Spontaneity remains the most striking feature of the dances. Dance and music go hand in hand in their traditions and become parts of everyday life. Dance and music become one and faithfully unfurls the pains and pleasures, the smiles and sorrows of life. The rhythm gradually spreads itself and touches and captures every mood that nature and human mind in the high hills are here too. The rhythm gradually transcends 
the confines of the words and gestures and becomes one with the dancing trees and the mindering streams. It overflows the valleys, scales the hills, and wakes up the gentle clouds. It becomes one with the rhythms sculpted on the distant outlines of the mountains, and goes to touch the golden moment of another daybreak in the hills. <laughs> <laughs> 